Hey everyone, this week I'm going to be showing you how to use Photoshop 2022 to blend together two different images. So it's great when you go out, get that perfect shot, brilliant lighting, perfect composition, no distractions in your image, and it's done all in one shot. In reality though, it doesn't always work out that way, and sometimes we have to do a little bit of editing in Lightroom, in Photoshop, afterwards, to enhance the image. Last week I was at Yorkshire Wildlife Park and if you haven't seen that video I'll put a link up top now if you want to go back and watch that. And what I was trying to do there was take pictures of the animals but make them look like they were in a natural environment rather than in the wildlife park. And what I thought I'd do this week is take that a step further and see what I could do with post-processing to see if I could further enhance my image and make the shots look like the animals really were in the wild in a natural setting. Now just remember there are lots of different opinions out there about composite images. Some people don't like them. My own personal opinion is that they're fine as long as you're A, upfront about what you've done to the image and B, all of the different parts, whether that's two, three, four or more parts of the image are all your own images. So no taking stock photography or images from the internet. It's all your own work that combine to make that image. So let's have a look and see how you can create a composite. Okay, so this is the image we're going to work on. This is an African lion. It was sleeping five minutes prior to this shot, but then it woke up, had a little wander around, and then let out this almighty roar just to let the crowds know that he was the boss, I think. And yeah, I was in the right place at the right time, so I was quite pleased with that shot. But the background, it's a little bit too green. I think if uh, this was in the natural environment, some kind of African savanna, that grass might be a little bit more golden yellow. And these really kind of bush things at the top don't look quite right, so we're going to try and fix that. Now I don't have any images of an African savanna, unfortunately, because I've never been. But um, I do have this image, which was taken at the end of last year, near Kerbar Edge in the Peak District. And I'll link up top to that video if you haven't seen it. And I think this might be a little bit closer to a more natural setting for my lion. And what I'm going to need to do first is get rid of the, the stag in this image. So to do that I'm going to use the lasso tool which is up here, third one down on the left. And I'm just going to quickly draw an area around the stag. like so and then I'm going to go to edit content aware fill and I think we'll get better results if we just click scale here it'll just help to get some of those grasses the right size that's looking a little bit better but still not quite right I think we'll just okay that, it's not going to be perfect. But what I can do is use the clone stamp as well, which is here. And use Alt or Option on the keyboard, just to sample an area. So I'll sample there, and then just paint that over. This really doesn't need to be too perfect. I think that'll probably do. Okay, I'm just going to flatten that into one layer and then drag that into my other image. Now I don't want any blue sky in this. I think it'll be too distracting at the top and also the angle of which I took the lion shot was quite low down. So I think I need it to match up in such a way that it doesn't have the sky at the top, it won't look the right angle with the sky in there. And we'll just drag that layer behind the lion. And what I need to do now is isolate my lion from the background. So 
I'm going to click on the fourth tool down, which at the moment is the magic wand, but I'm going to change that to the object selection tool. And I've got object finder turned on up here, which means that after it's done a little bit of thinking, Photoshop will highlight which area it thinks I want to select. And it's done a pretty good job of selecting the line there, so click once and that'll make a selection of my line. Now the problem is if I, I can press Command and J on my keyboard and we see that we've got the line cut out but we've got this horrible jaggedy edge which doesn't look right at all and hair and fur is notoriously difficult to cut out uh, with post-processing tools but I'll show you a way how you can do that and make it look a little bit more plausible. So we're going to add a mask to this layer. So we can do that quickly by coming down to the bottom of the layers palette here and clicking on that icon there. Now this has masked off our area, the background, the same as before. We've got the very sharp edge that we don't want. However, what we're going to do is click on Select a Mask here in the Properties palette. You can also click up here on Select and Mask when you're using the Selective Tools. And if we go to View up here and select on Layers, we can see our background as well as our Lion. And then what we want to do is bring up the Radius slider And you'll see that starts to make the hair look a lot better against that background. And we can feather that a little bit if we like. That'll just blur the edges a little bit and soften it. I don't want to do that too much. We can also experiment with the contrast. If we bring that really far up, we start to get a more sharp, defined edge. We're probably better with a less defined edge, so I'm going to bring that back down, maybe to about 3%. And that's not looking too bad now. And we can also use Shift Edge. If we bring that down, it'll just bring our selection in, inside of its own boundary, if you like, and uh, just get a get rid of a little bit more of that outside area so it blends better with our background. I'm going to bring that to about minus 33 I think. Okay, that's not looking too bad. So I'll click OK. And we're starting to get there. But what you often find when you're trying to combine two images together is that your foreground subject, in our case the lion, and the background don't match very well in regards to colour and luminosity and saturation and that kind of thing. So what we need to do is use a filter which was introduced quite recently to Photoshop. It's one of the neural filters, so if we go to filter, neural filters, and then down to harmonisation here on the right, click this little toggle to turn that on. And up here on the right, we can select a layer, and this is going to be our reference layer. And what that's going to do is analyze the colors and luminosity and things of layer two, and apply those to layer one. So you see the lion has changed color slightly now. It's perhaps a little strong, so I'm just going to bring the strength down here to about 50, I think. Or maybe just bring that up, it's maybe been a little too less now. I'll try 55. So we'll click OK. I mean you can play around with these other sliders as well, the colours and the brightness, saturation, that kind of thing. But I'm going to leave those for now. And you'll see this creates a new layer. So if I turn that off, that's how it did look. And you can see how that's been blended much more accurately to the colours, saturation and luminosity of the background. And we don't need the layer beneath now so we can 
turn that off, that does make our edge look a little bit neater. I'm not going to delete it just in case I need to refer back to it, but we can just turn the eyeball off. Okay, so it's starting to look quite good now. On my original image, the whole of the background area was thrown out of focus, just to do with the depth of field that I was getting from the lens, the focal length I was using in the aperture. And the background I'm using here, it's kind of out of focus at the bottom here, but it becomes more in focus as we get higher up. So that looks a little bit odd right now. So what I'm going to do to make that look a little bit more plausible is just blur the whole thing so it's all out of focus a little bit more like my original image. So I've got my background layer selected down here. I'll go up to filter, blur, lens blur, and I'll just zoom that out. What I'm going to do is just bring up the radius to around about 50. This will depend on your image, the resolution of it. But for this particular image, setting the radius at 50 seems about right to me. You just need to do it by eye really. And you can play around with the blade curvature and the shape. That'll just affect the, the bokeh really and how it emulates that effect. I'm not too concerned about the shape of the iris or anything like that, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. When we zoom out, that doesn't look too bad. And I just want to darken up the top of my background, so I'm going to make a new layer above my background layer. I'm going to use the Paint Bucket tool, but I'll click and hold that and select Gradient Tool and we want to select this menu up here here we can choose how we want our gradient to look we're just going to click on Basics and choose the middle one there so that's just taking our primary colour and fading it to transparent basically but we need to change our primary colour from white and we can click Option or Alt on the keyboard Choose a colour in the background which looks fairly dark, so I'll choose that colour there. And now I'm just going to draw with my gradient tool down from the top to around about there. And then in the layers palette I'll choose multiply, bring down the opacity of that. I think that's just a little bit too saturated. So I'm going to open up image adjustments Hue and saturation, and we'll bring down the saturation of that layer there so that it's not quite as in your face. You can see the difference that's made. It's gone from a kind of bright orangey look to a duller kind of browny grey. I'll maybe stretch that down as well. And there we go, I think that's the final image. So there you go, that's how you can use the selection tools, masking, the harmonization filter, and a little bit of lens blur to create a composite image where you can combine and blend two different photos into one final image. I really hope you found this video useful. If you have, don't forget to give me a thumbs up down there. And as I say every single week, if you're not already subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can also click down there on the big red button or over here on my face. And that way you'll keep up to date with everything I do every single week. There's a new video every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. UK time. So I hope you'll catch me next week for the next one. And until then, thanks a lot everyone, and bye for now.